Well, I've got another monitor here in my shop getting ready to be repaired. This is a Sony PVM20M2, and it has an issue that comes up quite commonly amongst older Sony CRTs, PVM specifically, and sometimes maybe a BVM this will happen to. But today we're going to go in, we're going to look at a temporary fix for this, and sometimes the temporary fix isn't good enough, which is the case for this monitor. And we're going to go in and do the more serious and permanent repair. First, let's take a closer look at the monitor turned on, and I can show you this problem. Okay, so the monitor's turned on here, and I've essentially got the problem showing up even without putting a console signal into the PVM screen. Now look, I'm sorry if you see any glare off the screen from light, uh, but it is glass and it's reflecting light in the room. But you can see I've got a blue, green, red. Now these are normally um, above your viewing area, kind of around where the tally light is in the screen, and they've drifted down here into our regular picture screen. Now, if this happens, there's two ways to fix it. The first way is the easy way. That's pulling up the submenu by hitting Menu, and then you hit Enter and Degauss at the same time. And on this one, it's setting number 84, but you're going to want to look for this V blanking, and we're at 60 hertz. This is we're in NTSC America here. So that's the one that we're using here. But if I go up and down, then on that setting, you can see as I increase, those lines come down here towards the middle of the screen. And as I decrease that value, the lines actually go up on the screen and are until the screen collapses. So the problem here is you can see that it's not much, there's, there's no way you could stabilize this screen having it at this vertical blanking setting because then you're going to have menu settings sometimes show up at the bottom here. And overall, if it takes that much of a change, if, if the lines are down here, most likely the capacitor that's controlling this has failed. You will come in and see occasionally times when those have just drifted down just slightly, maybe till about there. And if your letter or your numbers and letters are still up here at the top of the screen, most likely it's just drifted down over time due to settings and changes uh, inside the monitor over time. You know, the capacitor could not be fully charged yet. So it's okay to adjust it out of the screen if it doesn't show back up and it doesn't have to be one of those maximum settings. You could just get rid of it and not have any problems from that point. But that's the easy way if you're lucky enough to do that. But like I said, on this monitor, these three lines are showing up no matter what we're doing. Even after we go through and set the change of settings, after a couple hours, um, at least one or two of them will still just eventually drop down into the picture. So to get this done, we're going to go ahead and need to take the monitor apart. I'm currently set up to do my discharge now, but I want to make sure everybody knows this, that if you actually read the manual for this, uh, I'll show a picture of it, but it says that you don't discharge these like you do a normal CRT monitor. I always discharge them still the same way, but if you just read the manual, it says to not discharge. It says to go ahead and pull this cap out, and it shows you how to do it with a picture, but it says to pull this cap out and then discharge it afterwards. Uh, by discharging the current and, and tapping um, your discharge tool, you know, that's connected to a ground point, tapping that and the uh, tube like that. But it says not to actually get in there and do it like I'd normally do it. Now, I do it this way for everything just because I don't want to get zapped, and I still feel like if with their uh, recommended way, you are risking getting zapped. So let's just go ahead now and discharge this. That's pretty much all there is to it. One of the things you're going to run into when breaking down this monitor is this breakout. This is your focus breakout where instead of having to go down here and adjust on the back of the flyback over in this area, you'll just be able to easily adjust over here on this breakout controls. Now, instead of having to take, thankfully, this neck board off back here, I can just disconnect it from this or this uh, disconnect right here behind this uh, control and it's just slowly pulling it out and it just connects um, under the rubber there's just a little metal connection there so if you easily you can easily take that one out now that the monitor has been disassembled we're going to take a quick look at our chassis first we need to go down to this area which is the deflection area of our chassis and we're going to change out two capacitors. That's C572 and C584. 
these two capacitors directly impact those three lines that you saw on our screen and are giving us our screen problems. And to do this job properly, first I'm going to reflow the solder on these two points with some fresh flux and solder. Reflowing the solder will make it a whole lot simpler for the desoldering tool to extract both of these capacitors. Now I just use this desoldering tool and I get the rest of the solder out and the old bad capacitors fall right out of place. And our replacement capacitors are right here. And just want to let you know that this big one that's coming out is a 160 by 4.7 volt. We're actually going to be upgrading that part and changing it to a 160 microfarad by 10 volts. And this is a recommendation that comes from Sony on later documentation. Now it's time to install these two new capacitors and get the monitor ready to be reassembled and tested. Now our capacitor replacement is finished and it's time to reassemble our chassis to the rest of our monitor. Now that we've got our repairs completed, it's time to turn on the monitor and see the results. And right away you can tell we don't see any more lines at all. So that's already a really good sign that this repair was successful. I want to go now and do some test patterns. And first I've added a signal here and you can see when I do an underscan I still cannot see those red, green, and blue lines right away which is very good. And then I'm going to run through some color screens to see if I see any lines on any of those screens and I see nothing so now our screen is completely repaired. Alright the repair is finished and now we know that that is caused by those failing capacitors on those two spots so simply changing those two capacitors out will repair this problem on the PVM. Now just so you know I will be having some cap kits come for this monitor as well as a few other monitors please look for an update coming on that very soon where I'll talk about which monitors are available for cap kits. They're all going to be Sony PBMs and how you can get them. Just so you know, these caps that did the repair today, they are both included in even the most basic cap kit for geometry. So again, look for more of that stuff to come up. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please make sure you're subscribing to the channel. I'm Steve and have a great day.